Hello, I'm the Guitar Geek and I'm here with Daryl from Jones Musical Instruments. Hi Daryl, very nice to meet you. Real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Um, please tell us something about your beautiful instruments. Well, um, I took a guitar, guitar building course with Musicians Institute a number of years ago. John Carruthers was the head of the department at the time. And uh, I built an instrument that was, you know, like a first instrument that someone would build. And, uh, but I decided that I wanted to, do, to, to have more built. I went to John and said, uh, I'd like to have you build more. And he said, well, since you went on tour and weren't able to finish the chorus, why don't you come and, you know, and, and observe me and help a little bit build you know, the instrument. And uh, uh, so I basically, uh, it took us a, you know, a couple of months to build that instrument. And I took it right out on tour and started using it with the Rolling Stones. Wow. And uh, so you didn't finish the course? I ended up not finishing the so course. You're unqualified. I'm, well, I'm, I'm a working musician. I had a day gig, so, you know, you know, so I wasn't able to finish the course, but I did get back in time to finish the instrument, yeah. and that was the instrument that I took to John that he, you know, did some changes on, and then we started from scratch and built uh, the first Daryl Jones, I mean, the first Jones musical instrument production model. And wow. I've been playing that instrument with the Stones since then. Um, so, this must be a great course, because if you didn't finish it, <laughs> look at these instruments. Well, I mean, I've, I've been playing them for a while, and, yeah. uh, and, and John's been building uh, guitars for 50 years, so I had, I had yeah. the right kind of help. You got some special treatments. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and also, you know, the right kind of inspiration. I think we never, we, none of us lose our childhood uh, excitement at, over, you know, instruments. And, uh, Especially guitar players. Yeah, no, absolutely, you know, and uh, so... Uh, I remember when I had one instrument and the dream of having more than one was just that, it was a dream. And so I guess in a way, that's, this is you know, the, the, the kind, of, kind of an inspiration from, you know, from those moments. And uh, I got involved with you know, helping design instruments a number of years ago with a product that became the Daryl Jones uh, Lakeland Signature. Yeah. Um, and so uh, this is just uh, you know, the next conclusion. You know? So you're going solo? I'm trying it. I'm bass still, solo, still, bass yeah. solo. That's I'm still very much still involved with Lakeland, and you know I love the, the, the instruments that they built that I built with them. And uh, but I decided that I wanted to try something, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, inspired by the the vintage instruments of the 50s and 60s. And so that's what we're doing here, basically. You know? Fantastic. And I, I was I, I came because of the instruments, but I wasn't expecting the inspiring uh, building story. Uh, there's a lot of people that watch this, a lot of young viewers. And what would you say to them if they were thinking about building their own guitar? I would say you should jump in, you know, definitely jump in, you know. It, uh, if you don't have someone who's as knowledgeable as John, then, uh, you know, I would, I would say getting an education, you know, from somewhere, some luthier school would be a good idea. Or just, you know, trying it a bunch of times until you get it right. Yeah, that's, that's the way I would do it, you know, get it wrong so many times, yeah. you, you've got to get it right sometime. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. And there's a, a number of kits that you can buy these days, maybe start there. Mm -hmm. um, True, yeah, that'd be a good place to start, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, these are beautiful instruments. If it's okay, we can take a little bit of a closer look at them. Yes, absolutely. And you can talk me yeah. through them. Yeah. So, up first is this gorgeous bass. This is the Chatham bass. I grew up in an area of, of Chicago called uh, West Chatham. So I decided to name the kind of most, most, uh, this is the this is uh, the five string model of the first instrument that I that I built with John Carruthers. Uh, it's uh, it's essentially a, a uh, one pickup. Um, it is uh, uh, I'm trying to, to to speak about the instrument without you know about the inspiration of the instrument without. It sounds you know, like sort of the first instrument you you had. It reminds me of that a little bit. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a, a P. P style instrument, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, basically using very much of the same kind of uh, woods. It's a very basic wood. I'm interested. I'm not interested in the exotic instrument thing unless someone wants me to build that for them. So, what woods are we using here? This is alder of alder body, maple neck, and uh, palfera of, of, of fingerboard and and control panel. So it's all against society's regulations, everything's clear. Exactly, yes. Yes, that was one of the reasons why we went with uh, Palfera rather than Rosewood. There are some restrictions that are happening with Rosewood, and so we decided to just forego that. Palfera is a very, very good substitute for that, and so we're, we've done that. 
I think it's a sensible move. I really do. Um, we'll uh, talk about the T-style next, if that's okay. okay. So as you can see, it's a kind of a T-model guitar, uh, except for uh, the, the uh, inspiration came from Keith Richards' models of, of Telecaster guitars. He likes a, a humbucker pickup in the, in the neck position. So that was essentially wh who I had in mind when I built this guitar. So this is our basic model. Of course, if you want something different, we're happy to do it for you. Does, but, it, co does it come in a five-string model? You know, we thought about that, <laughs> but probably better and more, you know, adaptable if you just take the take the string take off, off like you, you can't like put you it on. You can yeah. take it off. Absolutely, yeah. And this is uh, again an alder body, maple neck, maple fingerboard. Uh, the pickups are from uh, Lindy Fralin. Wow. And uh, that's our Tellum model. Tellum, clever name. Yeah. Well, let's move on to a green, sort of a, an emerald green. What, what kind of green is yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I had someone tell me that it's like British racing green, you know. But uh, yeah, emerald green, I think, is, is even more more uh, more apt. Uh, this is the Gresham bass, mm -hmm. and this is uh, more like a J style instrument. Again, it's uh, alder body, Palfera, uh, 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 fingerboard, and control panel. Uh, Lindy Fralin. Uh, J bass pickups. Uh, this is the four string model. And uh, yeah, we're you know very happy with it. That's the design is mine, and the builder again is John Carruthers. Fantastic. So how does this differ from the Chatham bass? From the, from the first one, the Chatham. This is a two pickup instrument, uh, single coil, two uh, you know, dual single coil pickups okay. on the instrument. Yeah. And we've got volume and double tone or double volume and tone? Uh, uh, volume, volume, tone. Now we've got a rather vintage-looking style of guitar. Yes, this is our at? this is our first uh, relic guitar. It's the Stratham model or Stratham model. You know, read into that what you like. Uh, this is a one-piece uh, ash body, uh, Paul Fer Ferra neck, uh, fingerboard, and maple neck. Uh, Beautiful job of distressing it uh, by uh, a gentleman in John's John Carruthers uh, 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 shop. Uh, again, Lindy Fraylin pickups. Kind of a vin I asked him for a vintage, uh, you know, early to mid '60s uh, 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 Strat type uh, uh, pickup setup. And uh, yeah, we're really proud of this instrument. It came out very well. I think it. it uh, people have been asking me, when did you build this instrument? I said, well, I actually, I was 10 years old. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's aged beautifully, I think, don't you? Well, you look better than the guitar, so <laughs> you've done well. The idea was to, to develop an instrument that was... Um, all of the instruments are based or, or inspired by the pre-CBS Fenders. Okay. That is, is, is our kind of uh, model. I think that Leo Fender got so much right when he built those instruments that there's very little that, that needs to be changed. You just want to use modern technology and uh, and make the few changes that can you know that can help you know make the guitar modern in the in ways that are good for it. Yeah. Uh, but but very much uh, inspired by by the vintage instruments of the 50s and 60s. If it isn't broke, then exactly. Okay, let's move on to the bass, a five-string. This is the five-string Gresham model. Again, alderwood body, Palfera uh, control panel and fingerboard, a maple neck. Um, this is, uh, again, it's, all of the instruments are passive because, again, um, inspired by the vintage instruments of, of the, you know, of the 60s. Uh, and, you know, we're very, you know, again, very proud of this instrument. It came out very well and uh, sounds great for those, those thumpers. It's really um, a great... What's the weight like on these? It's, um, is it... We are trying to, we, we, we prefer to build instruments that are not very heavy, you know. There was the, in some cases, you know, misconception that heavier instruments were, were more uh, uh, vibrant or more, uh, or, or held more sustain. And if you played any old Fender instruments, you know that that's not necessarily true. So I, I tend to go toward, a, you know, a lighter instrument. This one is a little bit heavier uh, than, you know, than, 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 my taste would be, but again, everybody has their different ideas about these things. <laughs> and uh, but we we prefer instruments that are on the light side. Okay, so this is the standard range. 
but you're also going to do custom jobs if people want to change something. Well, up. yes, absolutely, yeah. Because you know what we're finding is that uh, the custom shops of the various manufacturers seem to be the hot spots of those companies, mm -hmm. and so we want to offer in, uh, 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 people a chance to to personalize the instruments. Yep. And so, if you wanted different pickups, if you wanted a different neck shape, uh, whatever finish that you want, we're, we're, we're ready to offer that to you. It, with the market at the moment, it seems like the entry level instruments and the higher end instruments are doing really well. Yes. It's what we would call the mid range or the sort of standard instruments that are kind of suffering. So, yes. I think it's a really good business move to be offering that service. Um, Daryl, thank you so much. They look like beautiful instruments. Can I ask you to play one for me? Uh, sure, yes. Very even instrument and uh, and usable for a number of different styles. You know, we wanted to make something that wasn't such a specialized instrument, but something that is more proletariat. You know, it's good for the masses. You know, the one-stop shop. You need yeah. a bass. This Absolutely. is the one. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and we've got flat wound strings on the uh, on the uh, on the Chatham bass, round wound strings on the Gresham uh, for the you know for the for those that like that. And uh, so this is it, man. This is the Gresham bass. The four string model. They are gorgeous. Thank you um, very much. If you need more, then I'll put the website underneath this video. Okay. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm the Guitar Geek. Bye bye. Thank you.